When the pH is 7, then it's a case where the sample is neither acids nor base. But less than 7, it's an acid, we say. More than 7, it's a base all the way. In the last video, we talked about two different types of acids. We talked about hydrochloric acid and nitric acid. But you should realize that there's lots of different types of acids. There's a huge variety. So for example, this is carbonic acid. Carbonic acid is in soda water and in most of your soft drinks. Citric acid is your lemon juice. And oxalic acid is also in different types of fruit. So overall, there's many different types of acids, not just you know two or three. And in this top point, what we have to do is we have to identify a couple of them. So we have to identify acids including acetic acid, or another word for it is athonic acid, citric acid, or 2-hydroxypropane-1-2-3-tricarboxylic acid. And again, these names um, you will you might actually have to remember because it's in a slip stop point, but don't get too concerned about them in general. You won't be having to, you won't have any difficult questions with them. And hydrochloric acid and sulfuric acids. So we have to identify three different types of acids and just go over why they're called acids. So I mentioned in the last video that if there are proton donors, proton donors make something an acid. So proton donors are acids. And we said that one huge, very common proton that is donated, doesn't always have to be this one, but one very common one is our hydrogen ion. So that if the actual initial molecule donates an hydrogen ion, then it's often acid. And you can see in most of these structures, you'll see the hydrogens somewhere on the actual corner. In many of these, they can actually donate. can't donate every single hydrogen in this chain. But often you can see every most acids have these hydrogens somewhere in its actual molecule because they can donate these and then become its acidic or make things acidic. We'll go over the ones we have to cover here. So the first one was we'll cover is this one, which is acetic acid. Now, the different word for acetic acid is ethanoic acid. Ethanoic, and if you look at the actual structure of this, and if you might remember from your earlier chemistry course, the earlier module, you might remember ethylene. And ethylene was actually looked quite similar. It had C double bond. It had two hydrogens coming off. This was ethylene. And Ethanoic acid is actually, you can make that from ethylene, so it's actually quite related. They're very similar in terms of structure. But we'll go over quickly why this is actually a acid. And you can see here, we, it has four hydrogen in its chain, but you'll find out that it can actually only donate this one. This is the proton that it will donate. And in the structure, that equals to this here, this proton. It can actually get rid of this proton. It won't be able to get rid of the other ones. So what happens, we have our ethanoic acid, or acetic acid, they're both acceptable names. Acetic acid is a common name, and then ethanoic is a systematic name. Then we put that into water, H2O. And what happens now is it actually, so the actual acetic part became a chlorine ion, uh, became an ion, sorry. So here this is a negative ion because it lost the hydrogen proton, which means it has more electrons than. Pro protons now, therefore it is negative. And this one, hydronium ion, it has the water molecule, the original water molecule, gained an hydrogen, and overall it just has one more proton than electron, and therefore it's negatively charged, uh, po positively charged. And if you are confused by this, then watch the previous video, I went over all of this in more detail. I'm not going to go over it into much detail now because I've just gone over it and it would take too much time. but. One, we have one negative and one positive ion, and H3, H3O, hydronium ion, we can also just write as H+, plus, which, is a, which is a proton, because that's a more or less a crucial part of the whole equation. But here we can see that our acetic acetate, which is this here, lost a hydrogen ion, donated that hydrogen ion, and that's why we can call it an acid. Now this is actually considered a relatively weak acid, and we'll go over weak acids and strong acids very soon. This is a relatively weak acid because, yeah, I'll, I'll go over that next week. I won't go over that now, but I'll go over the next video, but that's a weak acid. And then we have, next one is citric acid. And citric acid we can find in, obviously, citric fruit, citric fruit. And this is the actual chemical formula for it. C3H5OCOOH. 
this is a triprotric acid because it can actually donate three different hydrogens. So this, in this case, if we only had one that it could donate, it's a monoprotic acid. Whereas in this case, it could donate three different ones. So it could donate this one, this one, and this one. In this case, it can actually remove three different ones. I'll just show you what the actual equation for when it loses one. It's much more likely for it to lose one than it is to lose three. After it's lost the first one, losing more is becomes less than it's likely. But this is the equation again for our actual citric acid. Put that into water, H2O, and then what happens is we have, so this means it has three of these groups. This is COOH groups. These are our COOH groups. And I mean that's three means it has three. So one, two, three. But now what happens is when it comes in contact with water, you can see now it has only two, two left. And the reason why is because one of them has lost its hydrogen. So let's say the first group has lost its hydrogen. Therefore, it's COOH because these two are still intact, and COO minus, so the COO minus at the end, because that last one lost its hydrogen. And then we have the hydronium ion also being formed. And the hydronium ion we can just write as H plus if we wanted to. But this is when it loses one, and if it loses more, then the same thing would happen over again. We would write COO just one, and then COO minus, but in brackets for two if it loses two, but it's just lost one. Right, so that's the idea. This is also weak acid. And we'll go over why in the next video, but this is also weak acid. But now I'm going to go over two strong acids. So we have hydrogen, hydrogen chloride, which we went over in the last video. So hydrogen chloride is a monoprotic acid because it can only lose one proton. It only has one proton to lose, this proton here. What will happen is this proton comes in contact with the water. The water molecule will rip this proton onto the, its actual structure. And then it'll be chlorine minus and that hydronium ion. So that hydrogen has gone onto the water molecule. And now the chlorine is by itself. And therefore, this was the proton acceptor, the water molecule. And the initial hydrogen chlorine ion was the proton giver. A proton donor. Again, if anything is a proton donor, we just consider an acid. So therefore, we consider hydrogen chloride to be a acid once it comes in contact with water, because then it becomes hydrochloric acid. So that was our hydrogen chloride, hydrochloric acid. Now this is sulfuric acid here. So the last one was sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid. And both of these are strong. I'll go over in sec I'll go over the next video of why. But sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid. Diprotic just means I can give away two hydrogens. Mono means one, di means two, tri means three. So diprotic means it can give away two of its hydrogens, it can give away two of these. But again, in many cases, it will only give away one. It's more unlikely to give away the second one. But this is the actual equation for sulfuric acid. So you've got hydrogen sulfate in water. So dihydrogen sulfate in water, and that comes in contact with yeah, water itself. And now you have, you lost one of the hydrogens, so you had H2 here before. It took one of that hydrogen, and now it's just H by itself, and the, the water molecule was the taker, so it accepted the hydrogen, accepted the proton, and this donates the proton. And we said that anything that donates a proton is considered to be an acid, so therefore this is an acid. And anything that accepts it is, is just the acceptor. And you can remember, we can write H3O+, which is the hydronium ion, also just as H+. And any of this is still confusing, just watch the previous video, I've gone over why, we can call it H+, as well. But for this dot point, all you need to be do is you need to be able to know, to name uh, the acids, including acetic acid, citric acid, hydrochloric acid, and sulfuric acid. And it would be good if you could recognize the structures. So if you have these four structures, you should know which one is which one. And if you, if, like for example, if that name comes up in a multiple choice, two hydro, hydroxypropane one two three tricarboxylic acid, you should know that that would be a citric acid, for example. This is the most important part. You should know that there are different types of acids, and why they're acids, except protein donors, 
maybe have an idea of you know, this whole structure and what that resembles and why that's important because these hydrogens can come off and they can be donated. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.